Hey, YouTube, we'll get to uh, tonight's Game of Thrones-themed episode in a second, along with why Ilan Omar is evil. I uh, wanted to take a few seconds just to let you know that for the first time, this channel and its videos' organic traffic through YouTube have been drastically reduced. It's more than demonetization, but right now a direct step in eliminating our ability to reach you, the viewer, at all. Uh, my half-Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond, has reached out to official contacts. We'll keep you updated, but in the interim, it's never been more important for you to support the show by joining Mug Club at uh, lotterwithcreditor.com slash mug club and watching over there. Please consider it. If you haven't already, it's the only way this continues. Enjoy the show. Louder with Crowder Studios, protected exclusively by Walther. And Hopper. Wojcicki. Who got your account back up? It was probably that half-Asian lawyer of yours. He's always good at fighting copyright strikes. We should probably <coughs> talk in the... Is this what you want, Stephen? To point a crossbow at your precious Susan Wojcicki? While she sits on a toilet? <coughs> I'm just surprised it's not a Walther. It would be both historically and creatively inaccurate. You've always wanted me off YouTube, haven't you? Yes, but you refuse to let it go. I respect that, even admire it. You fight for what's yours. I'd never permanently delete your channel, is that what you fear? You're far too much fun to permanently take out. You and your temper tantrums every time we ban your live streams. You broke them. What? I found them in pieces, shattered. Oh. Your gifts for those mug club fools. I tried to glue them back together with my own hands. They're just stupid cups. Say that word again. Then what? You'll kill the only meal ticket you have? You hit me with false copyright violations when you knew I hadn't violated any rules. Why? Hold up. <coughs> Let me finish. And we can talk this over in my office. I can't go back there. The mugs are in What? There. Are you afraid of a few broken cups? <laughs> You'll never hit four million subscribers. I will hit four million. I was always going to hit four million. I just wanted to take a idea if Jon Snow does this in the Game of Thrones. Does he flap? Does no. he flap the Jon no, Snow? No, I don't know. No, a Game of Thrones themed episode because my uh, my crew hates me. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> uh, yes. So we have, uh, well, we'll go in diff different order here. Uh, G. Morgan Jr., what's the one of the day? One of the day is Gmail. Actually. Mark Ryan. <laughs> Thank you. Mark Ryan Viognier. Mark I can rest it on my bosom. Wishing oh, you were geez. here. Probably wishing you were him right now. And uh, yes, we have Gavin McInnes on the show Ooh. today, by the way. Really Boom. excited about that. Gavin McInnes. Yeah. Uh, quarter black, Garrett. Show me your hood pass. I drink Hey, no thing. look, he's a midget. And uh, uh, we have the Hodge Twins, HodgeTwinsTour.com here. Yeah. As uh, the Unsullied, uh, what would you know your next tour dates? Yeah, coming up in Ohio, somewhere. <laughs> <Some day. laughs> yeah. Nothing Some like maybe. coming in. All the major cities in Ohio. You, don't, you guys don't watch Game of Thrones, huh? Nah. Is this what this is? Yeah. Well, you know what? Look, I look feel up, like I'm going to a gay bar. <laughs> <laughs> look up the Unsullied after the show, and I'm sure uh, I'll receive a letter uh, later. Yep. Question absolutely. of the day, Julian Assange. 
Hero or villain? Uh, while we're at it, Ilan Omar, who we'll be talking about, villain, villain. or villain? Let me know your thoughts. Uh, yes. uh, with the second one. We'll get to Assange and Omar one. in a second here, but first, Attorney General <laughs> Bill Barr, say, uh, he said that he was going to release the, the Mueller report, full report, within a week. This Ooh, comes from Real okay. Clear Politics. Huh. This process is going very well, and within a week, I will be in a position to release the report to the public. Huh. That's good. Uh, in other news, Brian Stelter has succumbed to a stress-induced coma. Yeah, so... <laughs> oh, Jesus. So we're told he's in stable condition and surrounded by people who love him. Oh, that sucks. Uh, yeah, aw. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> took a little... Took a little time. I know what you're thinking, by the way. We initially were also more excited uh, thinking that it was Attorney General Bill Burr. Okay, dude. I'm not saying the president didn't do some fucking horrendous shit, all right? Okay, I'm not saying that. But on the other side of the coin, can we admit that not every false rumor just fucking fell from the sky? Okay? I mean, you guys spread the fucking rumors. The pissing prostitutes. It's brutal, right? It's like, well, BuzzFeed said it, and then CNN said it, and oh, fuck off, you guys are lying to yourselves, right? <laughs> I really would have. Uh, uh. I think government would have been more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. God, that should, was dead on. We should definitely, <laughs> we should definitely have comedians testify before Congress more often. We should. Yeah, yeah it, would, it would be a lot more fun to watch at least. Sometimes they do, like Ted Liu. <laughs> oh. Uh, that was terrible. I'm ashamed of myself. Yeah, Back to Julian be. Assange. He was arrested at uh, an Ecuador, you know, the Ecuadorian embassy, embassy in, in London. London. Yeah. This everybody, has been all over the Everybody knows that. Yeah, everybody knows. Everybody. I know. I just have to say. I didn't even know they had an embassy there until he officers went there. <laughs> Made the move. What are you laughing? I don't even know what they're laughing about yet. But I'll, I'll take it. They, take they, had it some, yeah. they have some cider in their mugs. Yeah, the they have a little over there. So. And anything above two percent just messes them up. Yeah. <laughs> It's basically Michelob Ultra or die for them. Uh, officers made the move after Ecuador withdrew his asylum, invited authorities into the embassy, citing the Australians. They actually cited his bad behavior. Oh. And huh. the biggest complaints uh, was his internet usage, not cleaning up after his cat, and his girlfriend's incessant lobbying for funding for Barbed Wire 2. Uh, so that seemed to... Yeah. Oh, that's okay. not how the embassy works. They don't fund anything. <laughs> That's Certainly awesome. not productions, Pamela Anderson. By the oh way, this is one thing. Barb, it made me think about this. You see barbed wire? Have you seen? Did you guys see barbed wire when you were a kid? You remember all no. the posters though for Pamela Anderson? Never. When was it considered? Why? Why did it become considered sexism to be sexually attracted to women? Like uh, we didn't put the the breasts on the poster. I understand thinking of a woman as a sex object. I get it. But being sexually attracted to women. Do, 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 this is a question for the female audience out there. Do you find it offensive if a guy finds a woman sexy? We we hear that all yeah. the time. That's sexism. It's sexism to be physically attracted yeah. to a sexually attractive woman. It doesn't mean that we think that's your only quality to offer. Right. It's nice. We don't marry you just because of how you look. It's just the window dressing. It's the curb appeal. Well, go. yeah, and that's what, I mean, if I was wearing this wonderful Bustom outfit out in public as a female, I, hey. what would I be asking you to do? Not I look at me? But thank <laughs> God they're unsullied because you'd have problems. I like it. Right? So Michael Avenatti <laughs> was indicted <laughs> on, this is a very white program. Yeah, I get it. it. Is. Hodge, yeah. like, what is, what is like, happening? They don't know what to do right now. They're like, what, what are we yeah, saying? Bring some color. Uh, <laughs> he was indicted on 36 charges of tax dodging, perjury, and theft Ooh. from clients. It comes from the LA Times. Grand jury alleges that Avenatti stole millions from five clients, used a tangled yep. web of shell companies and bank accounts to cover it up. So thir there you go. 36 wow. counts. Wow. Alas, the probe into Avenatti has come to an end as we transition to a probe into Avenatti. Ouch. In international news... <laughs> you better call Jesse. Look, look if you're, if you're, you're going to be, be a slimy criminal, do me a favor, avoid the spotlight. If every like gangster movie that's ever been made has taught us anything, it's that if you're going to break the law and be that guy, 
Do it behind the scenes where yeah, nobody no, notices. Go on CNN at least Don't go on times. CNN and talk to Stelter. I love how you all went silent in unison on my punchline. We did it on purpose. We let it uncomfortable as humanly possible. We did, we did it on purpose. <laughs> Remember, the more fun you have, the more fun they'll have. You thought they were probing him. Let's what? just make sure we hate doing this show. <laughs> in international news, because we're international here, after all, I was raised in Montreal. Uh, a Chinese company, they've now created an automatic. On. This is this is a real story. I'm sorry. Uh, it's not P the onion. PG-13 warning. Automatic sperm extractor <laughs> to help clinics collect one seed from donors yeah. who are reluctant. Oh, man, to oh, what no. reluctant <laughs> to service themselves. How much it was cost? About five hundred. Yeah, yeah. Because that's that's how you'll solve your birth rate problem, China. Yeah. You can actually get those in the store. <laughs> yeah. It's not in the store. It's a kiosk that they have. Because that's how that's how China China's going to solve their problems by being raped by robots. Oh, man. <laughs> Reports, by the way, are actually emerging that these receptacles oh. have customizable dirty, uh, really? digital dirty talk options. Oh, yeah. gosh. How about you come over here and give big robot mama a boy? Yeah, boy, not a daughter. No. We want a boy. Yeah. Girls are broke. <laughs> Listen. I'm aroused. When you have a one-child policy, it is important that it's a boy. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine walking up and standing next to that? <laughs> Being the guy that it extracts, it's a. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just was going in and out. I was just like, "Come on, who is the guy who tested this thing?" It's all How does it feel to have the favorite return, <laughs> Gerald Morgan? <laughs> he always has an axe to grind just because he's no, he's smart, but you know, not funny. Oh my god! And so then he tries to send it the other way. It's not fair. It's, it's not, not right. It and I, your soon-to-be marriage is a sham. This is China <laughs> in a nutshell. I am the mother of dragons they work, right now. They work 20 hours a day. They control a fifth of the world's GDP. But too lazy to masturbate. That is the Chinese. Gosh. No time for self -sign. Gotta get SATs more high on SATs than both Hodge twins combined. They it don't can't be one size. You try. It can't be one size fits all though either, right? I mean, they, they gotta have like different attachments. I think they're all uh, changing. The same. I don't know. Uh, come on. It's I all, mean, they're all this big. All right. Let's not get into the stereotypes here because I'm not comfortable with it. Hodge twins. You guys agree, right? They have to be a different that. attachment, right? Oh, definitely. They're the unsolved. Plus, it would be. I'll bust that thing up. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Hate to hear the R2-D2 oh. sound. Oh. <laughs> All oh. right. We get it. <laughs> Are we having fun yet? Finally, a lawsuit <laughs> claims that TGI Friday's potato skins contain no actual potato skins. Oh. This comes from Reuters. That's Damn. how you know it's a slow news <laughs> That's week. That's it. When they're not editing flotillas and trying to vilify Israel, they're talking about TGI Friday's potato skins. The claim is a company exactly. misleads consumers by selling potato skin <laughs> snacks that contain potato flakes, potato starch, but no skins. This is actually part of a giant class action lawsuit. It also claims that Snickers... Don't really satisfy. Funyuns don't contain any fun. And that Alexandria Casio cortez isn't really black. Nothing wrong with preparing the food. Ain't nothing wrong with that. There's a lot wrong with that. The congresswoman's black scent uh, caused quite a stir online this week. Right, I need everyone to be quiet because we actually, I think, here, here to address the controversy right now is Representative uh, Alexandria Casio cortez Ms. Cortez, thanks for being back on the show. This is what a congresswoman sounds like. <laughs> what up, what up, S.E.? Okay, what's what's happening right now? What you talking about, Stephen? Well, congresswoman, we wanted to talk with you about the, the fallout from your recent appearance at the Al Sharpton event. Oh, and my I, gosh, I know, Stephen. It was dynamite! All right, okay. So, some say that you may have been pandering to the largely African-American uh, crowd. Come on, Stephen, I've heard the criticism from the haters, and yep. let me just say, that's some bull Okay, all right, it seems like Seems like you might Come be doing on. it right now, again. Shoo. You the one who panders, fool. Or should I say manders? No, let's not. Let, let's try and stay on topic here. Man. Listen, this is, this is what happened with Hillary Clinton before then Joe Biden. And some might argue the DNC has a long history of trying to play up to different oh, minority oh, oh, groups. Oh, with oh the damn! Oh, you just got knocked the f*** out! Yeah, yeah! Oh, yo, yo, Omar, world stars, I Okay, what, what are you talking about? What's, what's happening? My man just dropped that clown! You see that, Holmes? No. So, sorry, that was on the per peripheral there. I'm, uh, I'm very lost at this point. Anyway, Stephen, uh, code switching is a very common rhetorical tool, okay, in community activism. Is By communicating right? in the vernacular of the audience you're looking to motivate, it helps to connect with them on a deeper level. And I believe mm -hmm. you and I both know exactly what that means. And what's that? Shoo! Why you gotta play the fool? You straight up acting like a 
No, 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 oh, Congresswoman no. uh, Ocasio-Cortez, no. everybody. No. no, that's enough of that. No. You guys come yeah. back in and no. save, no, 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 save no, no, this no, no, here. No, no. Save oh, it. Yeah, Let's get rid of her. That's not, that's not <laughs> there you go. Oh, what a loser. <laughs> you were saying something about, about Cortez and her voice there. Yeah. What was I saying? Because <laughs> <laughs> I had that some was, of that cider. Man, that was horrible what she did, talking to those black people like Black people, go, you get them, girl. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's like she sees black people as like servants. people that servants. Like, uh, what's his name? Morgan Freeman on Driving Miss Daisy? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Daisy, I'm going to make me some water. <laughs> well, he's going to make himself oh some God. water? Yeah, whenever he had to go to the bathroom that movie. I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Miss Daisy, we're going to the stove. <laughs> <laughs> the Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> Look, nobody there called her on it either. Ex exactly what you heard. You get them, girl, right? And, they and the other was like, come on, come on. And she just kept going further and further into it, and nobody said anything. Yeah. Why? The, the only people that was upset was white people. Really? Who were there? No, or even the, afterward. like on social media. Nobody oh, yeah, yeah. black stood up and said anything. Oh, of course. I mean, but it pissed, it would it pissed, like, legitimately pissed you guys off? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, was it's it just like, like because it's pandering? Hey, let me ask you yeah. this because, you know, Disrespectful. Uh, my dad. Because your message should be the same for regardless of the group you're talking to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. She changed the voice, and I was like, and her rhythm. I mean, Gerald and, does that all the time. Well, let, let me <laughs> ask you this because, you know, my, my father, Darren, books the show. Yeah. Everyone else was afraid to book. Most guests, surprise, wouldn't appear on the show when we first started. <laughs> Who knew? Hey. So he often hangs out and takes you guys to lunch. Does he ever slip into the black guy voice with you guys? Because every now and then he does that with black people. He'll be like, hey, what's happening? <laughs> no, he kept getting wider and wider. <laughs> like, this guy's all right. He's got a, he's got a strong message. <laughs> uh, uh, took us to a, oh um, we call them places to healthy. Organic. Yeah. Ooh, it's delicious. Organic. That's about as white as you can get. Yeah. <laughs> you guys loved it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Gluten free. You have to be the whitest person in the world to eat right. gluten free. <laughs> hey, by the way, this week's trivia contest winner is uh, Sophia Lazarus Ooh, at yeah. so underscore Laz, who correctly answered that Ben Shapiro was a conservative I made uncomfortable by not wearing pants. Huh. Before we move on to everything wrong with Elon Omar. Which I should have probably mentioned in the outset. Yes. Uh, because people are going, what are you going to be talking about? Yeah, and I, I think it's, it's, it's necessary to get into Elon Omar. Before that, yeah. obviously Game of Thrones, this Sunday, apparently I'm supposed to do yeah. a review of the show, but we may be on the road doing a, a Change My Mind instead. Yeah. Um, Everyone here watch Game of Thrones? You guys watch? I don't yeah. get it. I've watch seen every single, every single episode. I don't like the show. You don't, you don't like the show? No, I don't like the show yeah, at all. Come on, why not? I think it's terrible writing. No, I mean, tell me why you don't like the show. Everything about the show is crappy. Everything really? about the show is crappy. When we were you know, picking the scene people. to parody, when we were picking the scene to parody, we literally couldn't find a single scene to par because nothing was iconic enough. There's some... It's that dull. There's oh, no iconic dialogue. Aside from someone getting their head the crushed, there's no iconic scene. Battle of the Bastards. There are three episodes. Battle of the Bastards, Red Wedding, and the one where the White Walkers finally show up and they're at the coast. Yes. Those were cool. And the rest, I, here's the thing. I really want to like the show. Wow. Tens, I really on. want to like the show. Tens of millions of people, <laughs> maybe even more than that, disagree with you. Vehemently yeah, they disagree with you. also watch Transformers 5. You know what? That's true. That's true. Are you guys watching it all? <laughs> Game of Thrones? Yeah. I got a joke in my show. Oh, I can't give it away. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give it away. Okay, okay, so look, Transformers, though. If you want to see, if you want to see the joke, go to a tour date, which is yet to be announced yes. because it had a cider. It's on so. the website somewhere. We think <laughs> somewhere Maybe. in Ohio this month. Well, look, no, I, I think the show. I like pieces, or I like shows that are in this kind of rough time piece, right? I know it's not; it's fictional, but it, it kind of portrays the time. I I enjoy that. I think the writing is actually much better than you give it credit for. Yes. I don't like the amount of sex yes. that it has. I don't like the amount of violence. I like uh, the it's actually slowed down. Care, I much couldn't care. Oh, listen, no. It's not, it has nothing to do with the sex or the violence. You didn't it's say it was. So I was weak. giving my opinion. It, everything about it is weak. We were just, it, it's I've not seen true. Every, I've seen every single episode. Every Fake single news. episode. Fake news. Okay? We were just talking about this one. The, the, the angry, short, lesbian yeah. girl. She joins the assassin, assassins. They don't have faces. What are, what are they called? The faceless men. They're called yeah. the faceless men. Yeah, like you can't get what? any more creative. No, they have. Faces. I know. They have multiple. Faces. They don't they have. have. They're the faceless men. That's <laughs> gold. Great writing, George Martin. <laughs> it was. It's. It's obviously pretty good writing. I think you're just being. Critical. I think it gets a free pass along with you. films like Lord of the Rings. No, but how and does for it get the a free pass? Harry Potter, because it's medieval, and people who play Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> and want to fantasize about a life that they don't live <laughs> like to feel as though this is cool. I mean, I'm sitting there and I'm watching Daenerys get chubbier as each season goes by. <laughs> Getting on bit. dragons, and it's just, it's just okay. Hold on a second. She got raped, like she got raped oh, by Daenerys Aquaman, sucks. and now she's traveling with dragons. And the midget is an alcoholic, and the guy with I just and hey, the, this whole I'm army of people have Sounds no like balls. like the inner cities. Yeah, <laughs> you know nothing, Stephen Crowder. All right.
Six and five. That's, See, that, that's how weak the writing is. The, the Game of Thrones. You that's threw a, out a reference, a and it's that unentertaining. No, it's because it you was not so much. It was like you, you could, refused to get into it. This. You look at this. You threw out I'm a Game of so Thrones reference right in this entire room. You could have heard a rat piss on cotton. I get that's it. how unfunny <laughs> it is. I guarantee you somebody laughed. All right, so some context. <laughs> Ilan Omar is the worst. <laughs> the absolute worst. Right, He's the congresswoman from Minnesota. Not to be confused with the other oddly named uh, terrorist supporter, Rashida Tlaib, representative from Michigan. Ah, yes. A lot of people get that wrong. You're born a state, so I yeah. want to make sure that people understand that. She's, uh, you guys are familiar with her, right? Yeah, they're I, horrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they meaning these two women. Yes. But while we're talking about not, not Tlaib, who are we talking about? Yilmar. Omar. Yeah. Omar. Omar. Yeah. I wanted to make sure. That was a pop yeah. quiz to see if you were paying attention. <laughs> yeah. I, did I pass? She's, she's a freshman congresswoman. Hasn't really accomplished yeah. a whole lot. Them. But you likely mm. already know her name. Why? Because yeah. the media has been promoting this woman Ugh. nonstop. She's been on the cover of Time, Newsweek, Rolling Stone, New York Magazine. Uh. So she went on Colbert last night where they discussed. They discussed quite a bit, but they wow. mainly discussed the fallout. Some of her recently, as she puts it, misconstrued. We'll get to that clip in a second. Yeah. Yeah. Pro-terrorist, anti-Semitic comments. Specifically the ones huh? about 9 Well, hear, how, hear her say it. You will have people get, come after minorities for things that they say, no. might, they might have insinuated. No, it's things but you no actually said. After <laughs> um, people nice like uh, the, the folks on Fox and Friends that actually say those words, it's not about insinuation. People make it their career to go after Fox and Friends and Tucker Carlson. It's amazing. There's an entire site, Media Matters, that just, it is just a a list, a laundry list of Fox and Friends got this wrong. This is what they ate for lunch at the Fox, at the News Corp cafeteria. This is one thing they always like, that you would never hear it about people on the right. Uh, Well, no, you uh, hear it all the time. By the way, this is what you actually said. Care was founded after 9-11. Because they recognized that some people did something uh, what? and that all of us were starting to lose access to our civil liberties. Uh, Someone uh, did something. something. Yeah. That, that might be the something. biggest understatement I've ever heard. <laughs> something. <laughs> Jeez. Something, something went something. down. She also, by the way, referred to the Pulse nightclub shooting as a simple misunderstanding. Pearl Harbor as a whoopsie daisy into the 93 World Trade Center bombing was nothing more than college hazing with a couple of kids and black cats. So. <laughs> Jeez. That's not all that's wrong with her. Let me give you just a few more reasons as to why she's awful. Uh, here's one. She's anti-science. Okay, and you hear this about the right all the time. In yes. February, uh, the United States Powerlifting Association, they banned male to female transgenders from competing Rightfully as women. So. And it's so funny. I have this from the story. Cite, as though they need to cite this at all. Citing <laughs> Men's biological advantages. <laughs> Everyone here's gonna laugh. Yes. It's like powerlifting. They had to cite men's biological advantages. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's almost like it's self-explanatory. Obvious. No, <laughs> not to Ilan Omar. She sent an angry letter. Okay, uh, demanding the Minnesota Attorney General investigate the powerlifting organization. What? Stating what? The myth, <laughs> the myth that trans women have a quote direct competitive advantage is not supported by medical science, and it continues to stoke fear and violence against one of the most at-risk communities in the world. No advantage. Someone wants to have a word with you. Oh my God. Ow. Ow. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a man. That's he a lived man. as a man until he was, I think, 32, yes. and then decided to beat the hell out of women. And to get paid to do it, right? By the way, her, her quote, most at-risk people, yeah, in <laughs> Islamic countries around the world, they are the most at-risk people. Well, There's yeah. not a lot of people that look yeah, like me actually, with boobs and a hairy chest <laughs> yeah. in Islamic countries. Second only to the at-risk people who the men beat the hell out of that's when true, they yes. compete yes. in combat. <laughs> didn't she fashion, uh, correct that... Uh, Girl's skull. You're talking about Fallon Fox there. Yeah, right? yeah. No, Omar didn't do that. We have no. a lot, a lot of faults we can <laughs> but, find with her, but I don't want to. But does, a, doesn't Omar have enough battles to fight? She has to pick up the trans, the transgender. Well, movement. no, hold on a second. This is what's so amazing to me. Like you're, you're United States representative. Yeah. And you decide that this is going to be the fight you're going to pick <laughs> with the Minnesota the powerlifting. Go. Yeah. Association and saying there's no direct competitive advantage. It's not supported by medical science. And also, uh-huh. this is what they do: is it's not supported by medical science. You have to accept it wholesale, right? But they, they, they'll, and then they use the flip side with if you don't accept the climate change science, yes. meaning yeah. that uh, the Kyoto Protocol or the Paris Accord yep. will actually uh, fix China's emission standards. If you don't yeah. buy that, all of a sudden you're anti-science. But then they say it stokes fear and violence against one of the most. So here's what that means: if you say, hold on a second. Men who become women actually do have some biological advantages. Yeah. They are going to accuse you uh-huh. of committing a hate crime. 
<laughs> a race crime. Right, hate speech. Because you are driving hatred toward the most at-risk community. Really? Actually, all I'm doing is saying that when you're a guy, you're a little stronger than when you're a girl. Just Bone a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Just, just saying bit. Bone density, fast twitch muscle fibers, yeah. reaction time. We're going to do a whole episode we on that to. because now there have been so yeah. many trans oh, people just, just beating the hell out of women in competitions. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's the, it's the worst thing you can do for female athletes in the world is say yeah. anybody who's a man that wants to compete as a woman now, we're going to break all of your records. You're never going to win another medal again as I'll long as you, you compete. What, I hate to see what the WNBA goes oh. on. <laughs> There's one Ooh, person that can dunk that. They'll be God, okay? <laughs> Put to LeBron, LeBron James. James. Yeah. 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 Here comes, baby. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Me thinks what? Nike regrets doing that retirement jersey for Dwayne Wade so early. Go, yeah. Just give him a weave. They're none the wiser. Now, uh, <laughs> next reason, they'll probably end up on the Florida WNBA game. That yeah, or on exactly. a Spirit Airlines center aisle. Yeah, Boom. you guys Ugh. flew. Totally. Uh, here's another one. She's an anti-Semite. And by the way, she's not anti. She just hates Jews. Okay. Omar says <laughs> she mean, actually said I that those I mean, were synonymous. She hates Jews. No, because anti-Semite can technically include Arabic, and I understand people oh. who say they use it as cover. But you know, let's just say she hates Jewish people. That's she more clear. says the Jews have hypnotized the world. The U.S. is controlled oh, wow. by a cabal of wealthy Jews. All classic anti-Jewish tropes. And I know yeah. you're going to hear the left say, "Well, what about King?" Okay, score one for you. All right, let's <laughs> one. put that up in the score. Here's the thing: there's a difference between, I think, this misspeaking, saying something stupid, or even saying something maybe once that could be a little earnestly racist or prejudiced coming from a blind spot. Here's the yeah. one thing too: I do. It's not just about misspeaking. I think everyone, black or white, has probably said something that, if you look back, say, you know what? That was a yeah. little bit racist, and it came from ignorance, and doesn't mean. Hatred. I don't yeah. think we should hang people for even that. No, I definitely yeah. agree. And I've definitely done right. that before. I said something one time that was kind of offensive to a person that I was with, and I was like, ah, crap, right after it. I felt it was, bad. It was them yesterday. No, they kicked your ass yeah. behind the dumpster. It was. Look, that's why I have a wig on. They did some a number on my head. They so. did. <laughs> Got to cover it up. dance on your head. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> that's not the first Anyway, time. the point is this happens on both sides, right, when people yeah. are in the public eye. But here's, with Omar, she knows exactly what she's yes. saying. She repeatedly doubles down on it. It's not a dog whistle. We hear that term all the time. Dog. No, she knows exactly what she's saying in the context in which she's saying. It's not a misspeak. It's a worldview. Yeah. By the way, a worldview that comes directly from where? Where? Can anyone guess? Where? What? The founder of the oh, feast, Muhammad. Yes, exactly. Right. Send your paintings at S. Crowder. <laughs> exactly. Well, look, it seems like no matter what, Jews and Christians are always fair game. Jews have been the most persecuted people in the history of mankind, right? And you have somebody, and, and really, no one else, Jews and Christians, if you say anything about any other group, you're immediately somebody who's either some hate speech or, like she said, you're picking on the most uh, at-risk group of people in the world. Right. In the 1930s in the United States, we had tons of people that, not anti-Semitism, hated Jews. That's a better way to say it, right? In 1939, there was actually a poll that said only 39% of Americans thought that Jews should be treated like the rest of the people in the country. Yeah. Wow. The year before that, only 60% or actually 60% thought that Jews were basically bad people. They were scheming. They were connivers and that they controlled the money supply. 60%. That's why when something like this happens with what she says with about the juice you have to stand up and say no we're not going to go back to the place that we were yeah. it's I, too easy i think she you know she saw the progress the jewish people had made and then she saw the weinstein story as her opening <laughs> he yeah, undid like, about he three now. decades why, of why? good jewish faith i mean for the, for the sake of politics people are going to turn a blind eye and say, oh, it's okay to pick on Jews. It's okay to just say that well, Israel's terrorists. Well, yeah, it's fine, right? right? You it's guys know Farrakhan. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> What's that. happening? He you know what I'm talking stuff. about. See, that was, that was my dad. I guess he's been on his best behavior with you. <laughs> yeah. And if you it's doubt so any of this, by the way, where we're just talking about Jews, because I, get, I know there are going to be a couple of people out there in the comments section like, oh, I knew you were working for Benjamin Netanyahu. No. Uh, <laughs> Let me go to my next point. She's actually pro-terrorist. Before oh. that, though, hit the notification bell because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot. They mean less than ever on uh, on YouTube. Uh, organic reach they has go gone away, down yeah. dramatically. We don't know what's going on right now. It's crazy. So you need to join up. Lotofcutter.com slash mug club. Uh, subscribe on iTunes. Give us a rating there. Okay, here's the next reason. She's actually pro-terrorist. And I, I don't mean kind of sort of. She's literally proactively pro-terrorist. Yeah. Okay. She begged for she begged for compassion in ISIS sentencing. <laughs> voted dog. in support of life insurance payouts for terrorists. I, if, oh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was after San Bernardino where she wanted to make sure that yes. they they still got what they get. What I get, mom, Larry, but you killed people. <laughs> the, the, yeah. vote, the vote was 127 to two. Yes, <laughs> yeah, she, she was one of the. She two. was one of the two. <laughs> the other guy thought the other that there two. was an amendment on it that he didn't like, but right. The 
the rest of the bill was Yeah, funny. it was two who voted <laughs> against it, and the first guy said, like, oh, hold on a second. I think this could be misconstrued. They clarified it, and he yeah. said, oh, okay, I was wrong about that. And she still said, no! No! <laughs> no! Why? Because Jews. <laughs> So <laughs> wait a minute. She uh, uh, a terrorist can go blow himself up, yes. kill millions of uh, hundreds, of th- maybe even thousand people, and get paid in life insurance. Yes, pretty much. Well, you can put yourself in a situation. Sam Bernardino. Well, not shooter. anymore, but she wanted to make yes. sure that they could. Make she sure. wanted him to. Yes. Yeah. They passed. They were trying to pass a law that would ban that. That would put certain limits. That, that mm-hmm. it was a terrorist action. Mm-hmm. Then there was no life insurance policy for the insurance company to have to worry about. Right. Re- and she said, hell? No, you can't do that. If he goes and shoots twenty-seven people and they get shot by the cops, he died. You have to pay out. What? Wow. That's what she was saying. Yeah, I remember when I saw my life insurance policy. If I killed myself within two years, I wouldn't get the money. Well, I wouldn't get it. my family wouldn't get it. <laughs> yeah, well, no, you still wouldn't get it if you killed yourself. Right. Yeah, but if yeah, you committed yeah. a terrorist action and the cops yeah. took you out, you're aces. You're aces. Yes. Uh, <laughs> still good. By the way, she she literally she and I'm not misusing literally. Here's a clip. She laughed literally about Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda, and she said, as we already said, we'll run the clip again because I think it's important that 9-11 was just something some people did. Just here, here, here it is in totality. The, the professor said Al-Qaeda. He sort of like his shoulders yeah. went up and, you know. Yeah, he he's in like, command here. Al-Qaeda, you know. But you know. He's an expert. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a few people he burned in cages. He was founded after 9-11. Because they recognized that some people did something and that all of us were starting to lose access to our civil liberties. She also just sounds crazy. And she did something. <laughs> <laughs> and who are you, people? Rafiki? <laughs> <laughs> did something? <laughs> what they do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do you think they did? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Is that upspeak? Yeah, she oh, sounds yeah. like she sounds like the Andy Kaufman character from Taxi. <laughs> no, <laughs> they awesome. did something. Yeah, they blew up a bunch of people on a bus. <gasps> no. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. She says after 9 11, they had to create CARE to protect their. CARE is a designated terrorist organization, most notably, by the way, by the UAE, where they still <laughs> they have indentured have, servitude. They have a little bit of look. experience with it, by the way. Uh, just, just a clarification CARE was started in uh, 1994. Um, so not, what did she say? Not, oh, she said she after 9 11. Oh, yeah. So, you know, quite a few years. Well, prior, seven We don't have enough time to go through all, but look into CARE, look into their ties to Hamas, funneling, uh, funneling money incredible. to Hezbollah, look into wow. their fake hate crimes that they've, they've yeah. perpetrated, all of these hoaxes on the American people. And if you still aren't convinced, remember, this is the organization that brought you Clock Boy. So that should be. <laughs> okay. They had, uh, they yeah. helped Clock Boy try to sue Ben Shapiro. <laughs> what? And lost. <laughs> That's Clock care. Boy. And funneled oh money to Hezbollah. Gosh. All right. And here's the first reason why I think she's absolutely awful. And this might surprise a lot of you. So this next one, it's, it's a little nice. bit difficult for me to set up. Um, I'm not, I don't know exactly how to frame it. Yeah. She, um, she married her brother. Now, when I she actually yeah, just get, get, married what, her brother. Just rip it off like a bandit. Well, she, yeah. Yes. Just say it. She be, she began her political. Did you guys know this? Yeah, I knew it. Did you really know it? <laughs> yeah, I really knew it. She's horrible. Yeah, it gets worse though. So she be, when she began local news outlets, right? They they uncovered early on in her political career documents suggesting she might have yeah. married her brother, uh, presumably to commit immigration fraud. I think Two Q right. Maddie has some headlines here. What? Now, I, I, I what God. biological brother? Yeah. Well, yes. Now I say suggest. Game I say suggesting. Don't do it. It's only going to make me mad, and I'm on a roll here. I say <laughs> suggesting <laughs> she married her brother because it started with sources which uncovered her ex-husband's name on her marriage and divorce records. Okay, uh, and they happen to be exactly the same as her brother Ahmed Nur mm. said Elmi. I might not be pronouncing uh. that correctly. I don't care because America. Now. <laughs> Some people may say that's just like John Smith over there. That's why I, I say I it could be suggesting. We don't know. know. I don't know. Just like Silva in that Brazil is like Smith. Was. But, now I'm going to give you that one. But if we continue on down the research trail, school records also confirm that the man she married was living in her father's house in high school. Well. Social mm-hmm. media posts show the guy that she claims was her ex-husband now calls her children his nieces. She refers to them as their uncle. Uh-oh. It's awkward. Yeah. Who's, like your favorite, coincidence. who's your favorite uncle? <laughs> Papa? I mean, that's really... <laughs> she's the cool aunt and their mother. Now, <laughs> I consider it beyond the realm of suggestion, however. All of this, I encourage you to research it. Go hit the, hit the, uh, the, the, the sources that are listed on the page here. And for people complaining, why didn't you just put it in the description? It would be too long. You can see the sources <laughs> right there on the screen. Just hit rewind, hit pause. I do consider it beyond the realm of suggestion, however, when you take into account that her brother's high school enrollment records list his date of birth 
April 4th, 1985. Okay. 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 Anyone want to guess the birth date of her ex-husband according to official marriage documents and divorce proceedings? What is it? <laughs> Could it possibly? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> April 4th, 1985. <laughs> oh my gosh. So oh, please, if You're you right find this too outlandish to be true, I encourage you to look at the evidence for yourself. Yeah, it doesn't look good. <laughs> She made a new the story broke. The guy deleted all of his uh, media accounts. And her response, remember, she is official statement. She denied it. And she said, a difficult part of my personal history that I did not consider relevant in the context of political campaign. She said, the insinuations that he's my brother that are, are absurd and offensive. Okay. He, he is your brother. How about any proof? How about a shred of <laughs> yeah. proof? Yeah. I mean, if people are saying you're banging your brother, wouldn't you offer <laughs> any proof? If you Just trot out your non-brother husband and shut everybody up. Yeah. Easy. Now. Is it possible, I, because I have to, in the spirit of fairness, yes. is it possible that she just married a man who happened to have the exact same name as her brother, happened to have the exact same birthday as her brother, wow. happened to live in the exact same house as both her and her brother, and it not be her brother? If I had an eight ball, it'd say, you're retarded. <laughs> Banging a brother. It is unbelievable. Oh that, that's, that's worse than banging the goats. <laughs> <laughs> but it is in line with it. it Which, by the way, we don't know what her brother's up to today. He deleted his social media. Yeah. I wonder why. Both of those could be included in this story. But we well, have no idea. And it's a crime. If she if she used it uh, for, for immigration purposes, it, yeah. it's absolutely a crime. And I'm less concerned with that as I am with uh, you know, uh, children with webbed toes. Yes. <laughs> this is like Arkansas. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we do that here. AOC uh, Press, the, the Twitter account, AOC Press, is really funny. Sometimes they post something. I didn't say this. That's why I have to say that. Said it's, it's really interesting that she can post a picture of her husband on National Siblings Day. <laughs> that was just, I thought that was pretty good. I was like, okay. And here's, okay cool. let me, this is what bothers me most about, about Omar, okay? Now, I'm not doing the Judge Jeanine thing saying, you wear a hijab? Does that mean you follow Sharia law? Do you hate America? No, no. But here's no. the thing. If you, do, if you look at the totality of the policies that she supports, if you look at the organizations right. She supports these organizations by and large support countries that implement Sharia law, or they've outright talked about having yeah. Sharia law, Sharia courts. Sharia law is 100% irreconcilable with the Constitution. Okay. Yes. And by the way, all of these problems that we're bringing up, brothers uh, <laughs> hating the Jews, being pro-terrorism, they're all congruent with Muhammad's teachings. Yeah. That's the issue. What really bothers me, though, I think most about Ilan Omar is how much this showcase. It, it's actually a blessing, I guess, how much it showcases the left's hypocrisy. Let me paint for you. Okay, let me, let me paint for you just to try and drive the point home here, if I could, for a moment, all right? Put on your imagination cap. <laughs> a United States congressman okay. came from the hills of West Virginia who, yeah. just hate, okay. who just hates how all them Jews run everything. The Jews control all the banks. The Jews control entertainment system. And he yeah. bangs his sister. <laughs> He'd be mocked uh. and booted before Colbert's opening monologue. Yeah. That guy is Ilan Omar. Yeah. He is Omar. She just happens to be brown and Muslim. There you go. We I, have Gavin McGovern. Oh, what are you going to say real quick? I like the guy from West Virginia better. <laughs> I like that uh, guy. All right. HodgeTwinsTour.com. Oh, we have Gavin McGinnis gosh. coming right up. Yes. Open your mind. Let us begin our quest to find a new sound. Now this, frankly, is a wall. 700 feet tall of solid ice, okay? Frankly, those seven kingdom caravans aren't bringing the drugs and rapes over here. They don't stand a chance. That's right, winter may be coming, okay? But this night watch is gonna grab it by the pink walker. And oh, oh no, oh no, this isn't good. What is it, sir? Looks like the Mexicans brought some of the giants with them. Giants, sir? They're five foot two. Only you could save the seven kingdoms by joining at lottowithcrowder.com slash mug club, okay? Frankly, it's $99 annually, but only 69 for students, veterans, active military. That's what. That's such a great deal. That's what they tell me. I'm giving you such a great deal. I don't say it. That's what they tell me. Lotterwithcredit.com slash buck club said the kingdoms. Last week, we introduced you to the Athene cunicularia, known by its common name, the burrowing or ground owl. It lives in parts of North and South America, infesting your grasslands, deserts, and increasingly your neighborhoods. Rather than take to the skies like other glorious birds of prey, he chooses to live in the dirt like a subterranean scumbag. Of course, many argue it's not our place to question God's creations. 
but the Lord has no place here, as the ground owl is clearly the devil's work. Either that, or the Lord has made a terrible mistake. Join Mug Club at louderwithcrider.com slash mug club for access to the full daily show, the entire Blaze catalog, a wonderful hand-etched mug, but more importantly, you'll support the livelihood of this program. But most importantly, join Mug Club to help us kill all the ground owls today. Louderwithcrowdershop.com is now selling baseball tees in red, blue, and ash. Get yours at louderwithcrowdershop.com today. I'm not entirely sure. Is that cultural appropriation for Pogo to do that? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what, what, what constitutes cultural appropriation. Yeah, if you're just taking music, the beat, if you're sampling, I have no idea. Maybe no. our next guest can answer the question for us. Uh, you know him. You love him. It's been a while. It hasn't been that long. It's been about a month, month and yeah. a half since he's been on the program. Yeah. You can go to defendgavin.com as well as uh, nohate.com with Miles McInnes. But right now, uh, today, we have Gavin McInnes. How are you, sir? I'm good. You know, it's a trip when I was told, hey, uh, you want to be on Crowder's show? I go, I can't be on Crowder's show. I'm watching Crowder's show right now. And then they go, well, just turn on the camera and then you can be on the show that you were just watching. And I'm like, whoa. And I, you know? now I am watching it as well, which is wildly uncomfortable. So you're watching me watching you. Uh huh. There is nothing we can do. Watching me, watching you. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Uh, I see where this is going, except not really. Um, <laughs> this is, seems to me like you have some new technology, new tri TriCaster technology that you're just futzing around with over there. Yeah. Very confused. Technology, more like. Oh, well, I don't know how I Are feel about this. you cats? What's going on with your ensemble? Uh, this is one of the characters from uh, Game of Thrones, apparently. I've seen every episode and I'm very ashamed. If you were a Game of Thrones character, Gavin, who would you be? I'd probably be the midget, because I'm short. No, okay, I guess that's um, I thought you were being cats, because in the new Cats musical, they're making it to scale, so buildings are going to be super huge and... You know, the door will be gigantic and stuff, like it is oh. for cats. That's, that's, that okay. sounds wildly expensive and sounds like it could be a, a worse disaster than Spider-Man on Broadway. Remember that? When it was <laughs> opening weekend and the guy just fell and broke his yeah. back? Like, well, what could have... Yeah, people oh. kept dying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they wanted to make it just like Spider-Man, so they sent actors flying over the audience, <laughs> and people kept getting broken legs and spina bifida, and some chick got AIDS when a guy cut himself. And eventually they had to shut it down. That sounds like Spider-Man meets Rent. Uh, Gavin, <laughs> what is going on? Or Cats, I don't know. I assume there are dirty needles around the green room somewhere in either one of those productions. Yeah. What's, uh, can you give us any status update on what's going on with your lawsuit against the Southern Poverty Law Center? It's amazing going through all these court documents and reading all your jokes out of context. Like, they didn't include my introduction to Naked Fart Yoga, yoga on NoHate.com. They didn't include how to fight a baby or my autobiography, how to piss in public. But they have all this really serious jargon like, and then he called Asians rice balls. And I'm reading it going, <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> has it occurred to you that that person was kidding when they said rice balls? Let's try this, Your Honor. Can you tell me of another human on Earth in 2019 or any surrounding year who would use that in a serious, like, these damn rice balls are coming in here, taking our <laughs> job. It's not used in that context. It was obviously a joke. It may be if there were an uncle who were racist but didn't know how to use pointed racist language. You know, yeah, <laughs> back in my day, we called them rice balls. And the people of color, we called them uh, colored people. <laughs> Maybe, you know, I could see it. An Asian immigrant who decided that he was just going to become a uh, anti-Asian racist. And he was like, we come here. I don't, I'm, I don't want me to come here. I'm so mad at all rice balls. We are rice balls. You are rice ball. You are rice ball. You go, are right. Guy is no, 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 no. You rice ball. No speak for me. Rice ball. Um, that's Dude, you're crazy. Okay. Shut it. All right. Yeah, pretty much. That sounds about so. So do you have any jokes that you've made that worry you most? Do you do you welcome the day in court where you you can talk about these things in front of a judge or do you go, ooh yeah, that one out of context could be uh, could be troubling. 
No, I, I I think I heard was it Zach Galifianakis? This one you may have to beep this, but um, well, Zach okay. Galifianakis said I didn't know. S- was a derogatory term for I don't, I don't know if this is Zach Galifianakis by the way but I can't remember who said this joke but they go I didn't know s- was a derogatory term for Asians and I was skiing and I was like uh, hey do you want to hit the slopes and these two s- got super mad at me right. yeah <laughs> that's uh, that's very much like a joke that Sarah Silverman uh. used to make until she slammed the doors behind her and said now you can't use the word gay hey uh, let me a c- couple of things since you were last on What's it been like for you now that we know there's no uh, Russia collusion? And then I wanted to get into the uh, the Candace Owens uh, controversy from yesterday because I'm sure you have some opinions. Ooh, that's juicy stuff. Well, the Russian collusion thing has not wavered. Have you noticed this? Right. Stephen Colbert says it's time to get our hopes back again. Hopes back up again. Rachel Maddow goes, "Heh, I hope you enjoyed your victory lap," meaning. Now that we are going, the ACLU is threatened to sue to get 100% of the report, which right. doesn't exist in law. We can't be outing witnesses. You have a, there's no such thing as a 0% redacted report, but that's what they've demanded or they're going to sue. Right. So I think the left, it's sort of like these doomsday cults where they go, the world's going to end on August 19th. And then on August 20th, you go, wow, you guys must be bummed out. And they go, no, now there's more members. Right. Now we're more <laughs> devoted to the gods. Yeah. Like, well, no, more obsessed with Russia than ever. Now we're really invested in our leader being a foreign agent. That will be a big, big W for us. No, I think, uh, I think that's a good point. And, uh, the, the redactions, yeah, I think a lot of people don't understand how this works, and it's always ironic to me. I've been watching The West Wing lately, again, on Netflix, and of course, this is where you always see the altruistic journalists that only exist in programs like this. The left is always obsessed, like BuzzFeed, like most of the, the original Russia stories, right? The Trump's, uh, Trump pissing, uh, watching prostitutes pissing on furniture. I don't remember. The story became convoluted. Yeah. But they always say, well, it's very important that I protect my sources. Release the full report! <laughs> All redacted means is that the copy you're seeing isn't 100% the same as the first draft. And you know if they release the full report, that missing sentence, that missing one line, that missing tiny word is going to be where all the collusion is hiding. Right. They are so... And it's linked to the Candace Owens thing because it's about this myopic obsession with your stupid theory. So your stupid theory is that there's Nazis everywhere lying on every corner, behind every corner, and that Trump worked with Russia and Trump's a white supremacist. And that's my theory, and I don't want to hear anything else. And you go, where's your proof? Well, Candace Owens said Hitler, Hitler wanted to make Germany great. So Hitler was great? Is that what you're saying? What? Right, yeah. No, that's not what she said at all. It also leaves out a big piece of the pie and that the Russians were not necessarily huge fans of the Nazis. Quite a few people lost their lives in the, that little <laughs> scuffle going on there. No, it is, if there's going to be anything redacted, you know, this is one of the, it's like, do you not say that the left, this is lost in them? It's like, listen, you are the people who talk about alt-right trolls doxing. We have to redact some information to protect the privacy of people because we're concerned. Remember, again, you're the ones who wanted to kill kids in MAGA hats, right? So I think it's a reasonable concern. As with all legal documents in the history of law, that's how it works, folks. That's, uh, let's see, see, have you, now, have you, has it, has uh, this been the case with your ongoing uh, suit with the SPLC? And wh- where can people go to find more updates on this? DefendGavin.com has all the updates. But they had a motion to dismiss. Uh, tons of other people are getting involved. We've got on Defend.com, we have well over 6,000 different people contributing to this case. And I think that is scarier to the SPLC than the money. Because money is just rich guys writing checks. But when there's that many people involved, and I, I've been told from insiders that this house of cards is crumbling. I think they're outraged that their net has expanded so far. So there are hardworking people at the SPLC with their nose to the grindstone. And then they get a complaint coming in. What's this? Then they read it and go, what the hell are we doing here? We're persecuting the Knights of Columbus? They're an extremist group? People are going to jail? We're infiltrating social media? Why are we talking about racism and sexism all the time? Morris Dees can't keep his paws off me every time I'm at my desk. So Richard Cohen goes, He's the president. He goes, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. We're fixing everything. Gavin is the worst guy in the world. He's racist and sexist. We're going to get rid of him. And Morris Dees, uh, you're right. You're right. He is racist and sexist. His behavior is not part of our culture. It's not what we pride ourselves on. So he's gone. So they fire him. And then people go, 
well, you're kind of corrupt too. I mean, you and the, the head of legal here, you don't seem to know what you're doing. And they go, that's why we're quitting. <laughs> we're, me and Rhonda Brownstein, the head of legal, we're both quitting. And we have a black woman taking our place. The black woman's going to take over now. Now are we cool? <laughs> right. So no. I, th- I think what you're saying is you just need to hire a black female lawyer, preferably one who's transgender yeah. with rickets. <laughs> <laughs> I identify as exactly that. I don't know how you knew. I guess that you can sense. <laughs> I just, I, I figured you get all the trump cards if you bring a disabled transgender woman of color with rickets in there. Some disease that should be eradicated, you know, by, uh, by vaccines or vitamin D. They keep reiterating their own racism and sexism, too. Like, they got this woman in, and there's SPLC employees. They have all these bloggers going, this seems like a great direction for the SPLC. And they just show a picture of her face. They don't say anything about her policies, anything about her experience. They just show her gender and her race. It's a, and they go, you see, we're really doing a good job. And it's a stark no, contrast. No, problem, dummies. It's a stark contrast to what happened with, with Candace Owens yesterday. And we talked about this yesterday with the Hodge twins. You know, I don't agree with necessarily everything that she said. And I think any time you draw any sort of a positive comparison or analogy with Hitler, it's politically ill-advised. But do we really think for any second there that that people sitting there on that committee believe that she supports Hitler's genocide against the Jews? Do you really think anyone believes that? You can say she misspoke. You can say maybe it was an inarticulate comment. You can say maybe it was distasteful. Any of the, But do you really think she supports the death of six million Jews? Let's comb through the entire continent from top to bottom and ask every single individual about Hitler and try to find one person who goes, I think he did a pretty good job. Uh, I like him. I think he's a good guy. You could scour the whole continent with whale's teeth, find filament, go through. You might find like four freaks, and they're not going to be articulate and successful like Candace Owens. They're going to be morbidly obese with type 2 diabetes, a strange sort of festering corn on his foot, and a tick. Or they could be uh, one of our fine representatives from the great state of Minnesota. Uh, or, or, <laughs> you want or, some of this beer, by the way? I, I, you know what? Yeah, let's, get, let's give where I'm. It's, everything's in reverse. All right, there we go. Give me a little bit there. No, I'm going the wrong way now. Uh, this is uh, this is going off the rails. Um, no, that actually did. Ha- <laughs> For people listening on audio, you're gonna have to go this watch. This is so this. confusing. Uh, when we were shooting a video, a uh, a chain. Uh, this still all over my floor. We were shooting <laughs> confronts. <laughs> In Texas, and we had a sign. I had a sign that said, not a Nazi, because we had this teacher, Professor Charles, Charles Hermes, who repeatedly referred to me as a Nazi. Um, and as I was I taping this stand-up, yeah. this Muslim guy drove by and said, what? Are you bad-mouthing Hitler? Greatest guy ever, man. <laughs> and drove off. So I think maybe you might find more than you bargained for if you uh, peel back some curtains in Dearborn. Well, he did laugh his head off, though. Uh, no, he so seemed he, pretty serious. It was more of a maniacal yeah, laugh than an, sure. uh, you know, than a sarcastic uh, laugh. It wasn't like, ha, 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 just kidding, bro. It was more like, ha, 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 juice. That kind of thing. The SPLC <laughs> is totally devoted to finding homophobia, sexism, racism, any kind of super religious dogmatism, uh, extremism. And you show them Islam and they go, excuse me, move, move. Get out of the way. <laughs> right. That guy Zeke Hiled at a party while playing beer pong. <laughs> Wait, no, no, not him, his pug, his pug. It's enough. Get out, Miss Omar. Just let's go for the pug. <laughs> All right. We have to get going here, Mr. McInnes. Uh, it is defendgavin.com. And uh, yep. a- anywhere else that you want to direct people here as they can follow your ongoing battle with the SPLC. Um, another thing I'd love people to check out is imdb.com. It's got a huge list of millions of movies. You can see the cast of who was in the movie box office. There's also oh. the parental guide. If you're not sure if your kids want to watch it or not, they got Animal House there. They just got a whole bunch of new releases on there. And it's it's like Rotten Tomatoes, but uh, not as fun. Yes, it is a very valuable resource, and I appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Defend Gavis, uh, Defend Gavis. Defend Gavin.com. Gavin McInnes, oh, thanks for being here. Yeah, okay. Look, I got a lab. I finally stopped being cheap. All right, we got to go. This is enough. That's enough. I hide you. I hide you. Uh, join Mug Club. Ladder with Carter.com slash Mug Club. It's $99 annually.
69 for students and veterans. An active military. Do it so I can keep playing a tranny CEO. Make this worth it. You get, you get a mug. Just do it. Hey, Stud Muffin, how you do? Wanna come over here, show Big Mama Robot a good time? Huh? Oh yeah, big, strong, imperious shoulders, huh? Wanna show me what a big, strong, imperious you are? Yeah, come over here, we'll play seven centimeters in Tibet. Join Mug Club at riderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. I'll show you good time. PPQ, PPS, CCP, and the very sexy uh, PPK. What do they all have in common? They're all Walthers, who are a wonderful sponsor to this program. Uh, we can't thank them enough. And listen, there are a lot of good firearms out there. We know that you have options. I personally think that Walthers are, are the best that you can purchase. But at that point, it's like a Mercedes, BMW, Saab. If this were 1993, I don't know. But the point is, they also have the balls to, uh, to sponsor the show. So our challenge to you is if you're looking to purchase a firearm, just try the Walther. That's it. Go to your local range, ask about it, try all the different firearms, and uh, let us know what you think. Try the Walther. That's called the uh, arrogant Jon Snow thought. This'll be cool. I'll jump in the lake with my cape. And then he waterboarded himself. Oh. I was in shackles. Unbeknownst I was, I was to drowning. him, unbeknownst to him, well, I should say beforehand, after he was he waterboarded himself, was very benounced. Oh. Yeah, he, he was benounced. He knew. Uh, Hot Twins <laughs> Twigs. Uh, we yeah. have some change of minds coming up here pretty soon. Yeah. Still not sold on the Game of Thrones review. And uh, thanks so much to Gavin McGinnis. I don't Come know. On. We have a ton of stuff going on. I'm so tired Game of these wigs of effort we put in for you guys. So, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> the, the headphone pressed a, 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 one of these hairs into my ear, and it was like a metal wire, mm. like a wire coat hanger. I put it there. Going in. All right. So. This is one of the, the closing segments, which is the reason some of you are here and the reason some of you tune out. All right, that's fair. Either I, I still appreciate both, both of you being here. So with YouTube's new algorithms, who knows how long you will be here. I'm going to offer some advice here, which may seem more reckless than usual. And I know that some, before I say it, some of you will hear it and say, Stephen, doesn't this fly in the face of everything else you've told us as far as being disciplined, working smart, all of that? No, let me explain something here. The fundamentals never change. Okay, so if ever I layer something new on top of what we've discussed, know the fundamentals, discipline, honesty, goals, measurable progress, consistency, all of those things are most important. Okay, like I said, I've said this before, working smarter, not necessarily harder, always leaving the hard option on the table though, always leaving that hard door open. But any advice that um, someone gives you can't help you unless you're, you're doing the fundamentals. Okay, the day to day when no one is looking stays the same. Okay, we're talking about extraneous circumstances here. We often talk about becoming the kind of man, woman, person, Z, you want to be. Uh, but let me start with something else here. Let me start with the kind of man, because I'm a man. We'll just continue with man. I know there are women watching. Let me start with the kind of man you don't want to be. Don't be the man where something comes up. Not only is that the kind of man you don't want to be, it's the kind of man no one else wants you to be. What do I mean by that? Something comes up. Okay, let me ask you, how many of us know this person? Could be a family member, could be a friend, could be an employer, employee, someone you work with, I don't know. Someone whom you're relying on for something, doesn't matter what it is. And ah, man, so something came up. They're always late. They don't come through on their promises. They hand in their work late. Plans get canceled. You have that person in your head? Take a second. Okay, now, let me ask you. You admire that person? You respect that person? Don't be that person. And I say this because I know that you're probably thinking of someone who's a real deadbeat, maybe a, a complete dirtbag, but guess what? You do it too. I do. 
We all do. The only difference between you and this person you're thinking of right now is that the something came up guy did it one too many times and it became a way of life. Now, we often talk about making excuses. We hear that a lot. But here's the thing. Think of anything you need to accomplish or that you seek to accomplish right now. You don't need to make an excuse to not do it. There's almost always a valid reason for it not to be completed. That's why I hate the term making excuses. How often have you told someone you're, that they're making excuses and they come back with, well, it's, it's true. And guess what? They're right. There actually was traffic. The printer did run out of ink. They actually did get caught up on a work call they couldn't get out of. People don't make excuses. People take an out. And that's why they get so indignant when you tell them that they're making excuses. Because in their mind, they justify it. And in reality, they're not technically wrong. But you're upset because of your expectations of them. My point is this. The only difference between you and that person is how many times you've done it. And you know what? If you keep that in check and you stay in line with all the fundamentals we've talked about, sometimes you do have to throw. This is why I said this advice might seem reckless. Sometimes you do have to throw caution to the wind and be the guy who just bulldozes the somethings that come up. There's always going to be something that comes up and another and another and another until you find yourself boxed in. I want to see more people just bulldozing them. Pick an obstacle. Really, this is a challenge right now. Pick an obstacle that's been holding you back. Pick a fear. Pick something that's come up right now. Go blow past it. And I know some of you are saying, it's not that simple. You know what? Sometimes it is. Think of when you were a kid. I remember when we used to get into the lake or the pool in Canada. It was really cold. First dip of the season. And I can remember dipping my toe in, working myself up, pacing back and forth. And I remember with my brother, we'd say, one, two, three, go. And neither one of us jumped in. We'd do it maybe 15 times, three, go. Until finally, one of us jumped in on three. But what was the difference? What changed between the first 14 times and the 15th? Nothing but my resolve. It was the same problem. It was the same barrier to entry. The water hadn't gotten any warmer. I just decided that I was going to jump. Now take that and apply it to a situation of actual consequence in life. How much wasted time could that be? Because something came up. How many count to threes before you jump in? Could be years. And the only thing that's going to change for you to accomplish what you need to do is your resolve. Just bulldoze the obstacle. Fix your resolve. Bite down on the mouth guard, tuck your chin, swing. And yet, listen, I get it. Some of you are going to have a harder uh, time doing this than others. You might be at a, a more difficult point in your life. A lot of it depends on how long you've been letting this go on. Who cares? Right now, bulldoze the obstacle. Brush off the something came up. Don't be that guy. And I say guy because I'm a man. You know what? Women don't want a man who, when the rubber meets the road, oh, something came up. Employees don't want a boss who, when it comes time for paychecks, something came up. Bosses don't want employees who, when things are, something came up. The world, the life you want for yourself does not reward the man or the person who, when it comes to fulfilling your purpose, something came up. So the challenge this week is really simple. What do you want for your life? Think specifically of that something that's come up. All right? Think of what you want. Think of something that stopped you from accomplishing it. Got it? Take a second, pause it if you need to. Now bulldoze it, period. Don't be the something came up guy. The world doesn't need any more of them. See you next week.